said you checked all the clocks inside the building. Isn't that right, Fuyuhiko? Yeah, none of the clocks had the wrong time. But what if all those clocks have been messed with? What? All the clocks? So even if you checked all the clocks inside the building, there's no way you'd have noticed it. I see. So the killer messed with the time inside the whole building by changing all the clocks. <sighs> so that's what it was. There's no way I would have noticed that. This is truly fantastic! Now's not the time to be pleased. More importantly, how much was the time off? By like an hour 30, right? She's right. That's the main problem. I need to clarify by how much the time was off after the killer messed with the clocks. That's definitely the next mystery. I'm going to reach the truth in, in one go. Alright. Make your argument. Connie's account, Fuyuhiko's account, contact Elevator Nagito. Hmm. Hmm. Let's see. Go with. Either Fuya, Fuyuhiko or Akane's. If the time in the building was all messed up, then we can only rely on Nekomaru's radio clock. The time of death was clearly 7.30 a.m. The problem is, what time would 7.30 be in our time? Are there any clues that can be used to narrow that down? If only I heard the sound when he fell. No! I agree with that. There we go. <laughs> it bounced off the other thing. It bounced off the white noise. And I'm like, no, don't do that. That's right. Well, we did it in one go, Hudge, man. sound he made when he fell. Wasn't it that rumbling noise? Rumbling? I thought it was just an earthquake, so I went back to sleep. Was that the sound from when Nekomaru fell? Well, a huge body fell from the fourth floor to the first, and the pillar fell with it. It's obvious we'd hear the impact sound. We heard that noise, too. It was when we were gathered at the Strawberry House Lounge. What is it, Sonia? Oh, well... That sound everyone heard? I did not hear it at all. Huh? You probably didn't hear it because you were sleeping. I could not sleep at all. I was awake the whole night with hunger pings. There's nothing to worry about. What's important is that rumbling noise anyway. If a tree falls in the wood, does anybody hear it? Did a tree fall in the woods? Is that what we're doing right now? If we use that rumbling sound as a reference, we might be able to figure out how much our time was off. I heard that sound. Probably around 5.30 in the morning. Huh? You can tell? I instantly woke up and left my room. And that's when I saw the clock in the lounge. Excellent work, Akane! If the rumbling sound we heard was at 5.30 a.m., it's like the answer to how much time was off was literally in front of me. Two hours. I see! Nekomaru's alarm went off at 7.30. And if we heard the sound of his impact at 5.30, that means our time was off by two hours. Two hours? That much? We were starving pretty badly. There's no way we would have noticed. Plus, the funhouse has no windows. And there weren't any Monokuma announcements either. However, for what reason did the killer alter our perception of time? The reason is obvious. So they can lure out just Nekomaru. Around only Nekomaru. If you messed with the clocks and used a specific thing, you definitely get Nekomaru to the tower alone, right? From there, the killer's plan was a splendid success. That's all it means. Besides messing with the time, the killer also used the specific thing. If they were trying to lure only Nekomaru, then that specific thing must have been his clock. Monokuma Taichi. I see. That's it. The killer made use of the Monokuma Tai Chi activity in the morning. How did they use it? We were required to go to Great Tower every morning at 7 a.m. for that activity, right? But if they mess with all the clocks inside the building, what would that do to us? We wouldn't be able to attend on time, but that wouldn't affect Nekomaru. His radio clock had the exact time. That's right. In doing so, the killer was able to lure him to the tower by himself at the precise time. And when I witnessed Nekomaru early in the morning... 
If I recall, you witnessed Nekomaru around 5 a.m. You witnessed him going to his death. Goddamn, Fuyuhiko, you could have stopped him. And if that time was also two hours off, it should have been 7 a.m. Yeah, that's pretty much it. At that time, he was heading over to Monokuma Tai Chi, right on schedule. I see. Now that I think about it, I realize what Monokuma meant when he said those words. <gasps> Too early! He didn't even ask you yet! Jeez, how outrageous. I honestly didn't expect everyone to ditch Monokuma Tai Chi. But it turns out like this after all, so I guess it can't be helped. When you said everyone, you were including us, right? We thought we came to the tower on time, but in truth, it was way past the meeting time. Ah, oh, jeez! That's, well, how should I put it? Um, what was it? You know, tripping over a foot or something like that. Are you talking about tripping over someone else's fault? You mean tripping over your own foot? Wrong! Too bad! Liar! I'm right! That's not it! It's incorrect! Th that's definitely the correct answer. You always get so stubborn like this. Let's just ignore the peanut gallery. Now that we've found out how the killer lured Nekomaru, the number of suspects has drastically decreased. Huh? Hey! Why would that decrease the number of suspects? Don't be a friggin' liar! You'll know I'm not lying when you listen to what Fuyuhiko's going to say next. Huh? What the hell do you mean? The alarm clock going off? Or the wall clock going off? You witnessed Nekomaru going toward the tower. Did something else happen after that? Are you talking about that alarm? Hmm. Alarm? A little while after I witnessed Nekomaru, the clock in the Strawberry House Lounge started going off. Plus, it was just before that rumbling sound occurred. That's it. So that's what it is. If Nekomaru died when the rumble happened, then whoever doesn't have an alibi at the time is the prime suspect. Really? Was there anyone who didn't have an alibi at that time? Are they gonna say me? Because I don't think I had an al alibi at that time. I remember now. The sound was so loud I couldn't help bolting from my room. But there was one guy who never left the lounge. We were both on the same floor. It's pretty weird that bastard never came out of his guest room. Are they talking about Komaeda? Which means that person does not have an alibi for when Nekomaru fell? Who is it? Who's the bastard? It's whoever doesn't have an alibi for that time, right? They probably mean Komaeda, because Gundam was there with them. But I'm pretty sure Gundam's the fucking murderer, him and his goddamn Hamtaros. You're the only one! The one who wasn't there. It's you, right, Nagito? That's right! Nagito wasn't there! It was just me, Gundam, and Fuyuhiko. You didn't come out. Even though the alarm was going off like crazy, you weren't in your room, were you? If that's the case, where were you? I was in my room. Please, say something! If you don't hurry up and answer, I'm gonna suicide dive you! If I may be frank, even if I wanted to go to the lounge, I couldn't. You couldn't? What do you mean? <laughs> it's merely the foolish talk of the week. Not only did I not hear the alarm, I never even heard that rumbling sound. He couldn't? You're definitely fucking lying! Uh, however, that is also true for me. It is obvious that I did not hear the alarm in Strawberry House. But I did not hear the rumbling sound either. Is that not strange? I mean, everyone else heard it. To be honest, it's not just them. The same goes for me, too. Huh? I was in a pretty deep sleep, so I thought that's why I couldn't hear it, but it wasn't that. I probably couldn't hear it at all. Couldn't hear it? What does that mean? You still don't know. Think about what the three of us who didn't hear a sound have in common. 
and I'm sure you'll figure it out. You son of a bitch, I know. They all had the fucking, the fancy rooms. And that shit was probably soundproof. The only person who didn't hear the rumbling noise were Nagito, Sonya, and Chiaki. The secret is, what do these three have in common? Could it be also the secret that points to the killer? Don't make me- Oh, okay, good. So what's the fucking word we're looking for? Well, they had the, the, the awesome rooms, the deluxe rooms, I guess. Is that what we're looking for? Is the word deluxe? It might be deluxe. Yeah. How do you spell deluxe? Du. Luxudu. Uh. Where the fuck is. I need another U. Uh. I need an X. There we go. Deluxe rooms. Where's an S? There we go. I got it. Nagito, Sonya, and Chiaki. The three of you were staying in deluxe rooms, right? If I recall, the deluxe rooms are. The guest rooms are divided up by quality grade. The deluxe room is soundproof and has excellent air insulation. The standard room may have so-so insulation, but it's still pretty decent. And the crummy rooms have service airflow and draft problems. The reason we could Oh, no wonder fucking noise. Kazuichi and uh, Akane heard it like so loud because their rooms were so shitty. That's right. It was because the deluxe rooms have superior sound insulation. You actually noticed that. Nice catch, Hajime. Are you using your ultimate reserve course student talent? I'm gonna fucking... I'm gonna shoot you one day. And you're not gonna stop me. Now then, you guys must understand by now, right? The true identity of Nekomaru's killer. Oh, hold on a sec. Why does that lead to who the killer is? <laughs> Why? Well... That fact just now is a very important clue, and a decisive factor in identifying the killer. A decisive factor? Somehow I feel like I understand what Nagito means. The killer amongst us. The killer who murdered Nekamaru. Thank you, it's about time you fucking- Why are you smiling? Why are you smiling? Why is he smiling? Someone stop this man! You're the only one! Gundam, there's something I want to ask you. When the alarm rang at the Strawberry House Lounge, you rushed over there too, right? What's wrong with that? If the bell of catastrophe rings throughout the night, it is the universe's providence to stop it. Why were you able to hear it? Hear what? I mean, you were also staying in a deluxe room, right? He was? Nagito was staying in a deluxe room in the same house, on the same floor, and he couldn't even hear it. I didn't know Gundam was staying in the deluxe room. What the fuck? Oh, you're fucked. So why were you able to hear that alarm? Uh, now that you mention it... G gundam There is only one possibility. You weren't in your room at the time. That's why. Even though you were staying in a deluxe room, you still went to the lounge. Am I right? Gundam, um, you have some sort of explanation, right? Sonya, please. Sonya, please. There's a chair in the corner of the room. I suggest you sit down and stay quiet. The adults are talking. Gundam probably couldn't return to his room because of Fuyuhiko. <laughs> Me? After you saw Nekomaru heading to the tower, you stayed at the lounge for a while, am I correct? Until the moment that alarm started ringing, 
right? If you were in the lounge for that long, the killer who had left earlier obviously wouldn't be able to go back. Even though Mekamaru's murder was a death trap that utilized the alarm in his chest, the killer still needed to prepare the murder in advance. Like putting Nekamaru in sleep mode, and tying him up with the wire. In order to do that, the killer needed to be waiting for Nekamaru at the tower. Which means when Fuyuhiko witnessed Nekamaru, the killer was already at the tower. And once they tried to go back, they couldn't because Fuyuhiko was at the lounge. In their original plan, the killer should have returned to their room before the alarm in the lounge went off. And they were supposed to stay in their room. They weren't planning to come out and go to the lounge. Which means they wouldn't have heard the alarm or the rumbling sound, thus proving they were in the room, just like us. The best case scenario would have been if those two in the lounge had gone to check the deluxe rooms. After all, if they personally saw the killer sleeping in their room, it gives the killer a stronger alibi. Unfortunately, they failed to secure that alibi. Because I was in the lounge. So the killer couldn't go back to their room and ended up hearing the lounge's alarm. The biggest smile I have on my face right now. <laughs> oh God, Jesus. Hey, <laughs> what are you doing? This racket, it's louder than the supreme ruler of the netherworld. Blah, blah, what the fuck? Billowing for a sacrifice. Don't go making all that noise so suddenly. But why'd you come out? You should have hid till the excitement died down. If Gundam tried to hide, and if those two went to his room to check on him, he would have been found out. That would have been the worst possible outcome. That's why he couldn't just stay hidden. If those two had just checked the deluxe rooms as planned, that would have been ideal, but how ironic. The moment Fuyuhiko set foot in the lounge, your plan was doomed. G Gundam? Please, can you at least say something? Answer me this. Including myself in my Thor Dark Devas of Destruction, how many ears do we possess? I don't know. How many? Four plus two? Not four plus two. What the hell am I saying? I don't know. How many? Maybe it's... The answer is ten. That's right. I possess ten ears. That means I have five times the hearing of a normal human. The soundproof system here may as well not exist! Is that your argument? You bastard! Do you understand the situation you're in right now? D do not panic! The truth shall now commence! At the time, I left my room to go to the bathroom. By coincidence, I heard the alarm. That's right, that's all it was. The world is always so simple. Are you saying it was just a coincidence? Isn't that timing a little too perfect? <laughs> I love how he becomes more timid because he was caught in his lie. And yet, I'm being suspected by all of you. It seems it was actually horrible timing on my part. I see. You're still holding out. Well, you don't have to admit it. We're going to decide who the killer is with the majority vote anyway. So, why don't we just go ahead and start voting? It's obvious that Gundam is the killer. Uh, hold on a sec. You know, Hajime, this class trial, this killing, it's merely the opening act, you know. Excuse me? Hey! What do you mean the class trial is just the opening act? Perhaps I should say, it's just a farce. Just a boring farce. So boring, so stressful. I'm so painfully bored that I might develop stomach ulcers. Seriously. Let's just hurry up and finish this before I collapse from poor health. Nagito, something definitely happened to you, didn't it? Hmm? At some point during the investigation, your behavior became even weirder. 
What? What actually happened? Did you discover something? <laughs> well, let's just leave that fun for later. And finish this opening act already. Ah! You said opening act again! <sighs> Please hold on! We have yet to hear Gundam's rebuttal! Please, Sonya. Stop, it's over. But he's completely shut up. Perhaps he can't argue anymore. Gundam! <laughs> I was simply at a loss for words after being dumbfounded by your pathetic assumption. In fact, I shall deny the very basis. Your assumption has been wrong since the beginning. Since the beginning? Based on your assumption, I hung Nekomaru from the fourth floor of the tower and made the floor descend to the first floor. From there, after returning to Strawberry House, I was present when the alarm at the lounge went off, correct? Although going to and fro is busy enough as it is, how would I be able to travel between both houses anyway? I see. The contact elevator was broken. As I recall, the killer tampered with the Grape House control panel, which shut down the elevator. Plus, the stopped elevator should have been facing the Grape House side. If so, the human who used the elevator would have left it at Grape House. For these reasons, it's an indisputable fact that the killer destroyed the elevator at Grape House! Then what's wrong with that? If the elevator was broken at Grape House, he wouldn't be able to return to Strawberry House. However, I was already at Strawberry House. I was present when the alarm in the lounge started ringing. Which means your assumption is clearly wrong. Are you serious? And here I thought it's already been decided. <laughs> Have you learned your lesson, pitiful humans? You cannot overcome this contradiction. Gundam, just give up. That's wrong. When something is obviously wrong, that's when a contradiction is born. There's no such thing as a contradiction that can't be overcome. So, where is it? Kata elevator. Broken door numb. Oh, wait, what? I was gonna go with uh, Nagito's sudden appearance. The only means of travel between the two houses. As long as that elevator was broken, your assumption collapses! Plus, the elevator was... broken at Grape House. If the killer cannot return to Strawberry House... Since I was at Strawberry House at that time, there's no question that the following crime is impossible. It would have been different if they had an accomplice. Or if there was a secret passageway. How much longer do you plan to lecture me? Why don't we stop this already? Okay, so I know what I have to do here. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Akane. Means of travel, as long as that I was sitting there, I was like, I can't use Nagito's thing, so what the fuck can I use? No question that would have been different if they had. There was a secret. I'll take that. Thank you. How much longer? Why don't we stop this already? That elevator was the only means of travel. And there you go, stupid, no, fucking idiot, fucking stupid. What did you think was gonna happen? No, there should have been another way to move between the two houses without the elevator. Such a method does not exist! Then why don't we ask the person who actually used that method? Why don't we ask you, since you used it? But I mean, hey, we got Nagito. What's up? You're the only one! Nagito, you should know. Huh? What are you talking about? Don't play dumb. You appeared so suddenly that one time because you used that method, right? Nagito, why are you here? Because I showed up. There's a secret passage connecting the first floor of Strawberry House to the third floor of Grape House. Isn't that right? Jeez. Once again, I let the reserve course show up. But you're right. There's a door on the floor of the Octagon which is on the first floor of Strawberry House. 
After I opened the door and went down. Surprise, surprise! I ended up in the Monokuma Archive, which is on the third floor of Grape House. Meaning, the third floor and the fourth floor are actually connected. Plus, once you've cleared the final dead room once, you can pass through it as many times as you want. If they use that secret passage, they could have gone between the two houses as much as they want. Infinity Unlimited Flame! What the fuck did you say to me? Infinity Unlimited Slave? Well, was unaware of the existence of the final dead room. There's no way they didn't know. That is merely an illusion you have fabricated from your own suspicion. <laughs> if you value your life, you should stop with your scrutiny. There's no way I can stop. What did you say? Don't make me angry. You wouldn't like me when I'm angry. Gundam, I don't like you at all. Rebuttal showdown. Broken doorknob, wire, tipped over pillar, goodnight button. Uh, alarm clock, timer, radio clock. Eh. Even if the turbid box doesn't exist, you could travel through multiple planes. Provided you use a spacious wormhole. However, how frail, frail, I say! What the fuck? What a cave illusion. Shall I feed you to the progeny of vile deities? I already proved a secret passage exists. The secret passage was at the Octagon. Know the limits of your own reasoning! You say the killer went to the Octagon? Don't bark, you cur! If you don't want to drown in the maelstrom of blind confusion, at least pray to the key which dwells in the light! Trying to prove the evidence that means that they went to the Octagon. In case I should have to do it, the key which dwells in the light will break. Know the limits of your own reasoning! You say the killer went to the Octagon? Don't bark, you cur! If you don't want to drown in the maelstrom of. Allow me to cut through. Yeah, where the fuck did you get the wire from? I was thinking of the hammer first, but the wire. The wire used to string up Nekomaru's body. The hammer that looked like the weapon, and the chain on the door in the tower. Those are all the items that weren't in Funhouse. Where did the killer obtain them? The only place I can think of is the Octagon. There were various weapons and tools there. I'm pretty sure I saw stuff like wires, hammers, and chains too. Since those items were used in the crime, there's no doubt that the killer went to the Octagon. If that's the case, they obviously know about the secret passage too, right? <laughs> it seems this is the end. Normally we'd end up listening to Hajime lecture us with a very long summary of the case. But there's no reason to waste any more time on this opening act. So I'm going to end this right now. Wait, you're gonna steal my spotlight? Fucking asshole. Hey, what are you- First of all, by messing with all the clocks in the building, Gundam tried to lure only Nekomaru. The elevator was probably broken by that point. Thanks to that, Nekomaru wasn't able to go to Grape Tower, which was supposed to be the meetup point. So he tried going over to Strawberry Tower, just like we did when we found out the elevator was broken. Well, it's obvious he'd attempt that. At that time, we didn't know the two towers were the exact same place. Also, the button in Strawberry Hall wasn't broken, so he was easily able to enter Strawberry Tower. But surprise! Gundam was waiting for Nekomaru's arrival! Hold on. If Nekomaru didn't go to Strawberry Tower, what would the killer have done then? Their plan was a balancing act of uncertainties. But even if they failed, they probably wouldn't have minded. They can just greet everyone the next morning as if nothing happened, and come up with a different plan. And, without such a risky plan, they wouldn't have been able to lure him at all. I'm going to continue summarizing the case, okay? Through this, Gundam successfully lured Nekomaru to Strawberry Tower. 
there's no way he could fight head on with the robotic Nekomaru. So by pressing the good night button, he rendered Nekomaru powerless without fighting him. Hold on! You... what did you just say? That... I didn't battle? Hmm? What's wrong with that? Don't... mess with me! Don't mess with me! I cannot ignore those words! I'm sorry? What just happened? Why are you angry all of a sudden? You fools! Do not understand! You don't understand at all! Ha! You make me laugh! After all this time, you still don't understand anything at all! I don't understand anything. What does that mean? It appears I cannot finish just yet. Maybe I'm just a human destined for hell. However, I cannot finish just yet. I cannot finish! What do you intend to do? It's obvious! I'm going to destroy your illusory assumptions! Are you saying you still have more? You still have room to argue? Your words. You said I pressed Nekomaru's goodnight button. However, that button was on the back of Nekomaru's neck. To press it, I'd have to get behind him. It's not easy to get the drop on Coach Nekomaru. It's even more difficult if it's a one-on-one -on -one situation. Just as I thought, truly frail, succumbing so easily to this simple argument, it was just a mere illusion. Unless your fucking ham Taro's ganged up on him. <laughs> if you want to set me up as the killer, at least surpass your own human limitations. You, you want to know how I know Gundam's the fucking murderer? He sealed his doom the moment where he was like, Fear not, pitiful mortal. I will let my ham Taro press the button to the door. The moment he did that, I'm like, why are you show me, showing me this? Is this important for something? You're probably going to be the next killer because they showed that right after Nekomaru was all like, Hey, you pressed my sleep button. I'm powerless. That's wrong, Gundam. You're the one who's wrong. <laughs> Such a wonderful line. However, I cannot say that I'm satisfied. Listen well, I shall teach you two tips for making someone admit their defeat. First, you must crush them with your own overwhelming power. And as for the other, you must provide a reason that will persuade that human. You have not fulfilled either of those yet. I guess you really don't want to admit it. Then, just as you requested, I will provide an argument that will leave you no choice but to be persuaded. Panic talk action! I won't let you! For the Tanaka Empire! Wither! Crushed as David prophesized! I won't let you! For the Tanaka Empire! Wither! Oh, I fucked up. David prophesized. Show me the cadaver. Oh, zero stock. I won't let you. For the Tanaka Empire. Wither. Crushed as David prophesized. I won't let you. For the Tanaka Empire. Wither. Crushed as David prophesized. For the Tanaka Empire. I won't let you! For the Tanaka Empire! Wither! Okay. Uh... The Four Dark Days! This is the end! Even if you didn't get behind Nekomaru, you should have been able to press the button on the back of his neck. As long as you have the power of the hamsters you keep with you! Oh? He's like, oh shit. Are you seriously saying he used his hamsters to press the button on the back of Nekomaru's neck? Of course that'd be impossible for a normal hamster, but it would have been possible for Gundams. In fact, we saw that with our very own eyes, right? Emissary of evil in accordance with an in with a what? When ancient contract, the time has come to limit your aid. 
pierce through Supernova Silver Fox on D. See, this is the moment he sealed his fate. Right here. Right after Nekimaru was like, you pushed the button on my back, this shit happened, and I'm like, mm, look at those Hamtaros. Click. Ah, uh, press the button. Truly, this is the sun, this is the skylight lamentation art of the demon mouse. Soon, the door of destiny shall open. Now that you mention it, after Ibuki was killed in the music venue, one of Gundam's hamsters retrieved the piece of wallpaper from the baton lighting, right? Hey, with your friends and their exceptionally smart brains, it must have been possible to secretly get one of them behind Megamaru and press the button on the back of his neck. How about it, Gundam? <laughs> <laughs> Not just myself, but you actually brought up how splendid my subordinates are. <sighs> I have no recourse but to admit it. Crushed him under his power and persuaded him. Admit it? Did you say you admit it? Goodbye, Sonia. I'm losing all respect for you right now. It appears I've obtained a one-way ticket to hell. Fine! Then you must trample me underfoot and advance. Victory can only be built upon a foundation of corpses. You cannot find peace without sacrifice anywhere. Now, trample this life. Trample it as though it were mere trash on the side of the road. Pull the curtain strings of this worthless performance with your own two hands. You know, what really makes this disappointing is that although I say I don't like Gundam, I actually do like Gundam. He's pretty cool. Alright, so, uh... Clock. Okay. Um... Oops. Nope. Um... Let's see, we got this. Oh wait, that's the same as that, so never mind. Of course, that has nothing to do with anything. What, hammer? Hammer would be here, right? Doorknob would be here. Nope, I guess not. Here? Um, Hamtaro. that happened in this case let's first go over the many tricks the killer prepared before they committed the crime first they destroyed the contact elevator this separated Nagito and the others in strawberry house from our group in grape house next they lured Nikomaru out by himself by turning back all the clocks in the fun house by two hours additionally in order to secure an alibi the killer went to the Strawberry House Lounge and set the wall clock's alarm to 5.30 a.m. After finishing their preparations, the killer went to Strawberry Tower with the necessary tools in hand. They obtained these tools from the Octagon, which you can enter once you clear the final dead room. This means the killer discovered the secret at the Fun House faster than anybody else. That secret being Strawberry House and Grape House are actually the same building. On the morning of the incident, Nekomaru woke up and headed over to Grape Tower for a specific reason. There, Fuyuhiko, who was at the lounge by coincidence, witnessed Nekomaru. According to Fuyuhiko's testimony, that was around 5 a.m., but 
By that point, the killer had already messed with our perception of time. In actuality, Fuyuhiko witnessed Nekomaru at 7 a.m. That's also the same time Monokuma Tai Chi begins. Nekomaru went to Great Tower to participate in that. However, because the contact elevator was broken, Nekomaru was unable to go to Great Tower. So he decided to try going to Strawberry Tower. But the killer was waiting for him there. With the power of hamsters, they were able to press the good night button on the back of Nekomaru's neck. This forced him to enter sleep mode, rendering him immobile. From there, the killer began preparing to use the ultimate weapon. First, they set the alarm in Nekomaru's chest to 7.30 a.m. so he'd wake up. Then they tied him up with a metal wire, tied the tip of the wire into a loop, and hung it on the doorknob. After leaving Strawberry Tower, the killer then destroyed the door button to Strawberry Hall. They did this to keep us from entering Strawberry Tower, and to keep us from discovering the secret of the building structure that they used to kill Nekomaru. Then, they used the secret octagon passageway to travel to Grape House. After arriving at Grape Hall, they pressed the button to open the door to the tower. When that happened, the elevator-like floor of the tower began descending, and Nekomaru's body was still inside, dangling upside down in mid-air from the wire. The killer entered Grape Tower to see if their setup was successful, and placed a hammer on the floor to look like the weapon then wrapped a chain around the back door. This was done to make us falsely believe we couldn't enter the tower from Strawberry Hall. With this, the killer finished their setup and tried to go back to their room using the secret passage, so they could craft their alibi when Nekomaru died from the fall. But something unexpected happened. Fuyuhiko, who saw Nekomaru earlier, was still at the lounge. As a result, the killer couldn't return to their room, and with no options available, time ran out. The lounge's wall clock alarm started ringing at 5.30. Well, actually 7.30. To avoid a worst case scenario, the killer was forced to appear in front of Fuyuhiko with the others. When the wall clock's alarm rang, that was also the same time Nekomaru was waking up. He woke up while he was still hanging upside down, so he couldn't help but sway his body powerfully. Originally, the loop of wire was only supposed to slip off the doorknob, but because there was a heavier load than expected, the doorknob ended up breaking. Nekomaru fell from the fourth floor all the way to the first floor. He crashed into the pillar, which decapitated him on impact, and died. The sound of Nekomaru's impact echoed throughout the funhouse. However, by this point, the killer's plan was about to fail, thanks to the broken doorknob and Fuyuhiko. Meaning, the killer is someone who wouldn't have heard the alarm if they were in the deluxe room. They also wouldn't have been able to return to their guest room, because Fuyuhiko was at the lounge. That someone is Gundam Tanaka. I can't think of anyone else but you. God damn. I will I always love the summaries of the cases. They're so amazing. <laughs> that was splendid. For a mere human, you did quite well. Stop. Stop it already. Stop using weird words to avoid the truth. Or I'll friggin' kill you myself! I cannot believe it. I just cannot believe you you killed Nekomaru? I cannot believe something like that! You don't wish to forgive me, do you feel regret? Then finish it! Cast your impure votes for Gundam Tanaka! My beloved, deadly foes, let the voting time begin!
<sighs> Damn Gundam. What I get? What I get for this? A B for badass.